The QPR podcast is sponsored by XL Environmental, a pest control company based in Northolt and the Southeast. They provide for all your pest control needs, along with bird control, hazardous waste removal, and ground maintenance. And they're Rangers fans, so if you call them on 0845 double one treble six double one, mention our podcast for a ten percent discount. UPR, UPR, Richmond Rangers are on the up. UPR, UPR. Hello and welcome to Open All Ours, the QPR podcast. I'm David Fraser. I'm joined by two other QPR fans this week. Um, alongside me is uh, BT Sports, Chris Charles. The QPR podcast is sponsored by XL Environmental, a pest control company based in Northolt and the Southeast. They provide for all your pest control needs, along with bird control, hazardous waste removal, and ground maintenance. And they're Rangers fans, so if you call them on 0845. Double one, treble six, double one. Mention our podcast for a 10% discount. UPR, UPR, Richmond Rangers are on the up and up. UPR, UPR, now we're heading for your real time. Hello and welcome to Open All Ours, the QPR podcast. I'm David Fraser. I'm joined by two other QPR fans this week. Um, alongside me is uh, BT Sports, Chris Charles. Hello. Excuse the blah, 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 because I always yeah. have a mental block where you work, but... Fine. fine. I do sometimes. Fine. I fine. Sporting a new haircut this week. Good haircut. Yeah. Just standard, nice. isn't it, really? It's I'm liking it. Same one I've had for the last 15 years, so... Hey, listen, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the voice of... Drum there's, roll. No, there's no Finney this week. <laughs> I killed him. Uh, no, 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 no. GCSE choices, I believe, tonight. Not for him. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Him. Good on doing, him, finally Finney, getting them. <laughs> Finney isn't doing his GCSEs, but we have heard stranger things than that. Um, no Chris Mendes, but we have returning after a hiatus of about 18 months, we yeah. reckon. I'm the veritable Les Ferdinand of this podcast. You are. Uh, <laughs> My time in the wilderness. You can give yourself that. Um, <laughs> is, uh, no, I mean coming back and not doing much. <laughs> I'm going to do your big, your big intro now. Thank you. With half go. your bio. Bam. Harry Potter, big in between us. <laughs> <laughs> and Indian Summers actor Henry Lloyd Hughes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And QPR fan, of course. And QPR fan. That I mean, you know, it's the most impressive thing about me. So it, it's been a year and a half. Wind yourself up whilst I do the quick. Oof. Follow us on Twitter right. at QPR Pod. Search for us on Facebook. Um, search for the new QPR podcast, and you can listen to all old episodes at QPRPod.co.uk. Henry, yeah. what have you been itching to say about QPR in the eighteen months since you've been on? <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, I mean, first and foremost, uh, thanks to you guys for um, uh, keeping the uh, absolute sky-high standards of podcasting um, in my phone and uh, where I've do been. Do you listen? I do, that's what I'm saying. On film sets around the world? A- absolutely. Um, and it is great comfort when you're on the other side of the world, sweating in the Malaysian jungle. I um, keep you guys close to my heart. <laughs> so, <laughs> I Pretty remember, less so, but that's... <laughs> I have a good memory for these things. The lot of the useless information... Oh, okay. I'm about to describe a piece of work you've done <laughs> no, with useless please, information. Please. Uh, Last time you came on, you were about to be on a piece about Madame Bovary. Yeah, 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 yeah. With Paul Giamatti, have yeah, I yeah, got yeah, that right? Yeah, 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 top And boy. you said you were going to try and turn him on to QPR. Yeah. Did I, you succeed? Yes. I mean, he definitely doesn't support another football team. But <laughs> right. I, would say, I would say that he was um, uh, semi-indifferent towards uh, affairs of the footballing nature. A bit like us. Yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and, you know, who can blame us? Who can blame us? Because Omar Sharif, did, he, he's a Hull fan, isn't he? And he got, was, he got turned on to Hull was, by... Was a, was a Hull fan. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but the similar thing happened. He was in a, he was in a big, big film over here. He lived with a English, famous English actor whose name escapes me for this second. And uh, he became a Hull City fan. That's all it takes. That's all it takes is just get them while they're weak, while they're down, while they're vulnerable... <laughs> And then bam. We should have post-rationalised this. We should have thought about this and said it's the day, still technically the day of the Oscars. Oscars week, we've got an actor on. Yeah, you can so, do that. Henry, the Oscar special. This you, is now the Oscar special. So who's best, want, who is best actor in the QPR piece this season? What, what, so, what do you mean? Best actor in terms of uh, on the pitch? 
don't know where I'm going. <laughs> tell you what, I mean, okay. I'll tell you what, let's follow the normal procedure here. You were at the game on yeah. Saturday. I was, I was. What do you think? I, um, well, what I was thinking is, um, uh, can uh, Chris see me? Um, <laughs> because I can see him, but he can't see me. And at what point is it acceptable to kind of, um, I, I, you know, I, I back myself as a loud person. Mm. I back myself as someone with natural projection. And yet, I don't know if it's within my remit to go from Ellerslie Road all the way to the loft. Crow! <laughs> it's me from the podcast 18 months ago! Um, Do you know, that's weird because I, I periodically look out for you and on, on Saturday, without any knowledge that you were coming on... This is like one of those columns in the Metro. It's like, yeah. misconnection. Yeah, you are. <laughs> but, you are. But it is slightly <laughs> unnerving that you, you can now see me. So oh, yeah. you, you can I've now, you can now say... And, and your daughter. And your daughter. <laughs> so, there you go. At, right, okay. Yeah. Okay. At QPR. Yeah. Yes, whilst yes. at QPR. Uh, sure, sure. Also at the sure, game. Sure, yeah. sure. <laughs> sure, also at the game. I mean, I missed I missed the whole punching. I missed. It's a bit of a blind spot. because No, I'm, that was at the away end. Too busy you watching me. I didn't, you that's wouldn't have saying. seen that at the game if you were at our end. Which that's is what you're I'm in saying. Our block. That's what I'm saying. I'm in end block. You're in the lower loft. You would only have seen it after on social media. Yeah. No, no, I didn't even see it on social media. Uh, you, Someone got lamped, though. Well, there were two yeah. hits. A uh, bloke hitting him, the other bloke hitting the floor, wasn't it, basically? Yeah. Um, there was, I've heard so many conflicting reports about why it's a shame that this 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 is the most talked about bit of the game um but we yeah we just saw it was quite funny because my little girl was and we just saw lots of like movement and irate Birmingham fans looked at one stage if they were going to come on the pitch and she very uh, cunningly said uh, oh I think I need a sweet daddy for my for the shock when she, oh she, nice she, no, right. she, no yeah, shock yeah. Skill. whatsoever yeah um, but um but yeah uh, yeah I, I, don't, I don't know the full uh, SP. I mean, there were some people saying uh, there had been coins thrown yeah. some, towards the disabled section. This guy was coming over to remonstrate. Other people saying maybe he was just trying I, to take I, on you, the whole. You know thing. what? I, I I enjoyed myself on Saturday, but because I was with a, uh, a kind of gang of mates and we were up for a good time. But I was like, it was quite a bit edgy, wasn't unnerving it? Unnerving and really depressing because the. I mean, the, the Birmingham fans genuinely acted like it was the greatest r sporting rivalry of all time <laughs> yeah. and marched down the Uxbridge Road, beating their chests, uh, you know, throwing bottles, etc. Et and I just was thinking, what? I mean, even if you beat a 6 nil, no one really cares, lads. Like, literally, no one really cares. Like, you're, it's not... Like no one cares about a Barney, you mean? Yeah. No, no one cares about. But where's the? I'm sorry. Am I missing something? Where is the history? They're just one of, of the. Oh no, Birmingham. The Birmingham are just one of these clubs that are, are very they? well supported. Yeah, because they're they're a big club in a big city. No, no, I'm not talking about well supported. I'm talking about the what what are often yeah, called they, the unpleasant minority. Uh, they, yeah, I, I didn't realise. There that was quite about a few of them came with listen, an agenda. I saw deal. some of them on the train. Yeah, it was a big deal. Um, I, I, listen, I. Look, Cardiff, Chelsea, I'm used to it. There are clubs where you go, mm, there's going to be a bit of nonsense. Mm. And I was, you know, trying to get in my, my pre-match falafel in. <laughs> and, uh, and suddenly... Well, lovely. no, suddenly... That's quite the, lovely. The, suddenly the police... It, it, it was just this whole thing of people being kettled. I mean, not me. Mm. I'm talking about all their fans. And it was... They clearly went there with the intention of being like, we're a pretty big deal. And they started the game. And then when we scored, it generally, they were so, it was so the perfect example of you're not singing anymore to such a great degree that genuinely I felt sorry for them. I was like, yeah, I, mean, I, I actually felt upset. I was like, these guys, you know, they tried really hard and they wanted to be really hard about it. And Ooh. now they're just, they were singing and now they're not singing anymore. Yeah. And I feel like I want to sing some Birmingham songs to make them feel a bit better because they're so pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's why you've got your back Game, <laughs> game. Let's talk about the game first. Yeah. Because, stay tuned, folks. I don't think I've ever said those two words on this podcast. <laughs> Everything's gone so showbiz now. Stay I'm here. tuned. Like yeah, yeah, like stay it. tuned because we have Alex Smithies, an interview with Alex Smithies coming up shortly. Um, what, let's actually talk about the game. Now, Chris. Yes. Last week on the podcast, yes. I wasn't here. Uh -huh. Fantastic show. Love your work. Yeah, yeah. But all of you, to a man, even Lee Cook, who you had on, yeah. said hasn't clicked yet that was almost the buzzword of the podcast hasn't clicked yet hasn't ki clicked yet yeah did it click on saturday it did yeah and um i, I yeah i'm delighted to have to eat my words uh, on air and 
I, it clicked for a number of reasons. I mean, I did say last week that Ali Forlan's the heartbeat of the team, yada, yada, yada. And it's true. I mean, when it, the, the couple of games but he's been out... also because you have a slight infatuation yeah. with him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he's the equivalent of the person that, that like, you know, that's stalking... You're stalking him the way that I'm no, stalking but, you at QPR. Uh, if there's one man I'm going to leave my wife for, it's him. Yeah. And I think most people feel the same. Yeah. Go on. Who can blame you? No, but, but, but I think on Saturday... I mean, a, 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 there was a lot of... A, a, Big things that happened on Saturday. I mean, Carl Henry played out of his skin. Probably one of the best games he's played for us. He was all over them. He was getting into True. them. He was breaking things up. And he was basically letting Luongo um, dictate the play. And Luongo, I mean, there was a couple of diagonal balls he played that were just sublime. Um, particularly the one to Cherry. Cherry, another one mm. who had a fantastic game. Yep. Finally playing in the right position by the looks of it. I'm really up for it. I'm really, really up, up for it. For it. Yeah. And, really, and, the, and Cherry gets, you know, the, the fans, first time I've heard it, start singing his name. He responds mm. to that. He gives him a clap. Luongo's got his own song now. I, I was half hoping it would be based on sort of Umbongo, the Umbongo yeah, advert. Drink it in because, the Congo. Good idea. Yeah, Luongo, but, uh, Luongo. Yeah. But Why anyway. can't we do Cherry O, Cherry O, Baby? Is yeah. that too old a song? Am I like... What? Uh, that's the one I was thinking. That's, that's in exactly. the UB40 one. Yeah, or, yeah. exactly. Uh, the, reggae, the reggae... The reggae... Cherry oh, cherry, cherry oh, oh, baby. Don't yeah. you know that I'm in love with you? Yeah. It's not but they're singing, the, uh, they're singing the... They're singing the... I feel what about like you it's catchy. Boys? I feel I'm like looking it's catchy. at our engineers, probably <laughs> 24 and 20 in age. 21. Any idea? 24? No idea. Yeah. No but idea. But they sing instead, cherry, cherry, baby. Which is probably, yeah. Which is yeah, probably, yeah. yeah, but I'm that's even older. That. That's older. Uh, okay. um, I'm out of touch. But I just think, yeah, it, uh, everybody... I mean, Luongo... I mean, I think a lot of this uh, comes from, A, you know, Hasselbank's methods are sort of, you know, it's being drilled into them. They're getting a lot fitter. That's the first time I've seen a side that, look, at the end, still look fitter than the mm. opponents we were playing, which is a big plus. And that's true, actually. They, ha- they felt like they had uh, still a bit of juice in the tank. Yeah, and I, thought, and, and, and I did think that... Um, um, hang on, hang on one second. Go on, no, we keep going, keep going. Who, come on, let's try and work out who you're trying Henry, to. Henry, Henry, yeah, just yeah. Speaking about, um, I, I did think it's sort of reminiscent of Derry almost on on, on Saturday. He had a he good playing. game, yeah, yeah, which is not necessarily the most popular I have of been conversations a harsh detractor of his. Well, that's not unusual, no, is it? But he did. I mean, they all had a good game. Everyone on had Saturday, a good game, didn't they? Uh, I mean, I. I uh, I know, uh, you know, don't want to st- start with a negative, but uh, when Tozer, I mean, listen, Tozer is, uh, I mean, he's, he's dog shit, but, 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 when, <laughs> but you can't boo him when he comes on. That's outrageous. No, no that cannot is outrageous. boo him when, you, when he comes on, because that is an environment in which no one can succeed. I mean, at least the boo boys of which I, uh, you know, hands up, I've probably been one of them, re Carl Henry. If if you give someone no room to achieve, mm. you know it's like, you know, the, you can't boo the, someone before they've kicked exactly, the ball. Exactly, which somebody what well, they also did towards the end of Chris Ramsey's reign, they booed Carl Henry, I think. For yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I mean, I'm not saying that was me. No, they, but no, it they might could. have been me. But the point is, but is do that you that, regret that now? Uh, no. Do you see the error of your ways? Yeah, I do now? see the error of my ways, and I've come to atone for my sins. Yeah. And. The point is, people don't boo Carl Henry when he, he when his name is now announced in the team sheet. Yeah, correct. Yeah, right. But and he almost became a byword. He was almost yes. A they they actually meant yeah. Chris Ramsey at that time when they were booing Carl Henry. A, a big part of it, perhaps. Well, I mean, Carl Henry wasn't it wasn't booed when he came on. I think he was he was he he made a he made a you know fairly bad tackle and he only got a yellow and the QPR fans were calling for a red I mean that was that was mm. the that was the worst yes that yes that was it's it it's just like oh god's sake grow up you know but, um, but I, mean, I mean like Poulter is genuinely just not a very good footballer I mean he's just well, not good better feet than I thought no no, no he's one of those guys that is like he yeah. can't he can't he can't help but at some point get in the way of the ball and it ends up in the back of the net well, he's, well you he's, obviously and, missed and I, I think statistically he will get you 15 goals a season. Well, that'll do. No, no, no. Absolutely. But what I'm saying is it's like via telepathy. By, by, crook, by yeah. telepathy. He'll, he'll get, score a goal via text. He'll score a goal via fax. Like, yeah. it te- says everything <laughs> that... Have I ever seen a striker <laughs> win a penalty? And then they're like... They look at him and they're like, no, not, not him. Mm. <laughs> like, literally, not one person was like, oh, Tozer won the penalty. Meh. 
I mean, uh, not, uh, Polter won the penalty. Like, he should probably... T- literally, not for one second, they were like, uh, who can we give it to? Uh, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, yeah. Junior, you haven't, you haven't scored in a while. <laughs> but he's sort of... You're right. He's kind of not that good. He's but, like an idiot but savant. you love him he's a presence. and you want him. And yes, the he, point, the point you, I was you, making You would is, pick him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't quite work out why. But I, I think with Birmingham, though, I mean, they were... I mean, I mean I, oh, they were sort of hitting the deck like they'd been shot every five minutes. And I think they were generally... A lot of sides have done this, try to, to try to ruffle the feathers and try... But I think Henry, again, you know, uh, you know, got his foot on the ball and, you know, mm-hmm. let him know he was there. And I think Poulter up front did the same. And that sort of that, that frees up other people to do what to do what they're good at. And I mean, you obviously missed the Poulter's perfect nutmeg down by right by where you sit. In yeah, the, in no, the, I saw that. that. I saw that. That and, was like a know, brief. I mean, how much more skill do you want? Yeah, I'd saw I'd seen him like you know miss. Uh, miss time 16 runs and mm. miss hit 16 balls before that point but I think it's a, you know it's a championship we're not in, we're not in the Champions League and I, I, I think QPR fans what they've been crying out for is, is somebody who looks like they give a monkeys about the team and I've, I've re- repeated this ad infinitum but you know that, that time when Poulter tech, you know, put the tweet out saying you know what the hell is this or to mm-hmm. paraphrase show that he actually had a bit of passion for the team he cared yeah. rather than some of these johnny come lately who just turn up swan about and, and i'm no, talking no. about some of these players who are not playing for us at the moment but are still yeah. contracted to us uh who've got you know miles more ability but no know, no, no. Yeah. The, the 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 passion and the aptitude and the and the application was everything that was brilliant about um saturday's performance my question is weirdly what someone put to me which is that apparently the other manager uh, there's a bit of Burton Albion, Jimmy Floyd he was, history. He was, he was at Burton before Jimmy Floyd. Okay, yeah. So someone said to Gary put, Rowett, exactly. Birmingham someone manager. put to me whether that would actually um, put the fire underneath Jimmy, which would in turn be I passed thought, down I to the players. Birmingham were bad. I thought Birmingham were appalling, but there's no denying. Look, we are always the team that uh, our fans, especially in the our our block near where you know where I sit. Mm-hmm. We give uh, the team a load of the opposing team a load of shit, and then it, it, the fans come into our corner and celebrate. Oh, sorry, the players, the opposing team players, come into our corner and celebrate when they score. Now I can't remember the last time where the boot was on the other foot, and it was the QPR fans, um, the QPR players, uh, uh, flicking the metaphorical V's to the oh, Birmingham uh, end. Now, do you think that? I mean, listen, if they were just up for the game because it's Saturday and it's three o'clock and they care, brilliant. If Jimmy, because of some personal uh, axe to grind, made them up for the game, in a way, that's still good. I can't see that. I, I, I think personally, and I said it, I think it was the Ipswich game when they had both tiers. It seems a bit, you know, because for years we're saying, why do we give clubs both tiers? You know, it's, but, but I think the atmosphere has been pretty dire, as it is in most football grounds, let's face it, these days, uh, for most of the season. And, you know, not helped by the fact we've not been playing very well, but giving Birmingham the upper tier, giving them both tiers. So they were sort of, they were shouting, having a go from the off in more ways than one. And I think that got the QPR fans up for it and, and instead of just being q and r block singing yeah. there was a it, it, yeah everyone the atmosphere was, was everyone was everyone was right we need to move on i'm haven't even tested this but i'm gonna try something what does this sound like no that's it what's oh, yeah. that anybody noticed that alex smithies wax his feet on those posts <laughs> Every two minutes. I can't help it, but it's just like... Is that, you know, is, that, is, is that going to be your I'm opening? I'm waiting no, for it. No, but it's good because you it's, could ask him because I'm always re- interested in sportsman superstitions. So I will ask him about it. We have the QPR goalkeeper on the line now. Hi, Alex. How are you doing? I'm Chris. Hi, uh, you OK? Yeah, good I'm very well. You. Yeah, nice, nice to speak to you as well. Oh, well, well first, first and foremost, I think uh, it, it's, uh, it's nice to see you get a run in the side and, and it must, must be good for you. Yeah, I'm really enjoying myself. Um, you know, I've had to be quite patient in in getting an opportunity with a, to get a proper run in the side, and um, I'm really pleased to be uh, playing. You know, the last few games, and um, hopefully, I can keep this shirt. You know, and play as many games as I possibly can. Yeah, I mean, it must because obviously, when you when you when you came in, and then you know, for quite, you had a couple of games, I think, here and there, but generally, you were sort of on the sidelines. I mean. How, how how frustrating is that for a for a player? Uh, because as a goalkeeper, I sort of goes with the turf. It's you know you've only got one chance, haven't you? Yeah, it's difficult because you know as an outfield player, if if you spend a couple of games on the bench and you still might get a chance the week later. But for for a goalkeeper, 
uh, if, if the goalkeeper the goalkeeper's in the team and doing well, you know, you think you think and you're gonna have to be really patient because it might be months before you you're getting a run in the team. But um, I just had to bide my time and train as hard as I possibly could and uh, be ready for when the opportunity came. And uh, thankfully, that's um, that's come over the last few weeks. And uh, like I said before, I'm, re- I'm really enjoying myself. Um, uh, long may the running the team continue. Absolutely. Um, hi, Alice. It's, it's Henry here. Um, I, um, I I was watching the uh, the cup final, um, and uh, I'm, I'm assure, assuming you were too with uh, yeah. with uh, the antics of uh, yeah. the the Man City goalie. Um, was it? Were you feeling in in some way that uh, you know as as a kind of goalkeepers union? that uh, you, everyone kind of really, if you were interested in goalkeeping, as I'm a bit of an enthusiast, uh, that yeah. you, everyone kind of wanted him to do well. I mean, I think you've done a great, um, already done some great things uh, between the sticks for, for Rangers and the fans have certainly taken to you. Uh, uh, and uh, you, it was really, really nice to see that also reflected in the, in the City performance and, and uh, the, the City manager uh, uh, kind of supporting his, his keeper. Uh, even though you know originally he was, um, you know, uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I think it's it's difficult as a goalkeeper because um, you know the number two there. I think it's Cavallaro. He's not he's not played many games, and 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 the last game that he played he came, came under some quite a lot, quite a lot of criticism. So it's difficult. Uh, you know, he's, he's he's probably thinking, when am I going to get another chance? And uh, thankfully, him, the manager. Stuck, stuck by him, uh, which would have been a, a vote of confidence before the game, and uh, knowing that he had the managers back in, and um, you know he's, he's repaired them with, with three brilliant penalty saves. So uh, I'm sure he's delighted. But it's just the life of a goalkeeper. The, the ups and downs are probably a little bit more extreme than an outfield player. Um, you know, one week he's getting criticised left, right, and centre, and the next week he's the hero. So. I know. I thought, people, I thought it was very really poetic. Different. I thought it was very poetic, and I, you know, I was very moved by the whole incident. <laughs> well, it's quite, it's quite interesting that um, because goalkeeping now is almost a squad game, and at City they got Hart and Caballero, mm. and well, they've got Richard Wright stealing a living mm. as the third one. But at <laughs> QPR as well, there's there's three of you now, or, or well, there's a, probably actually there's four plus. Um, how do you all work together, the squad of goalkeepers, and, and, and what's the atmosphere like in you guys as a unit? Yeah, well, there's actually six of it, six of us pros who are, who are training daily, so there's quite a big group of us. So uh, we're, we're quite a tight knit group. Try and look after each other because not many not many other people want to sometimes. <laughs> so we, we we enjoy training together. Uh, obviously, led by Greeny, who's, who's got the most experience between us and. Uh, for me, uh, someone I look up to and I try and learn from. Um, you know, Matt's obviously coming from Wickham and looks very good to me in training. Um, so it's going to be a bit of a battle between between us all to uh, to, to get in, to, to get in the team. Luckily for myself, you know, I played the last few games, so it's sort of mine to lose. But I'll I'll do everything I possibly can to to stay in the team, and I'm sure they'll be. Uh, biting at my heels to, to, to take my place so it's, um, it's it's difficult only one person can play uh, but luckily there's a really good group there and we, um, you know, we all work very hard together and uh, push each other on OK Alex so there's six of you which means five of you don't play and in any yeah. other workplace those five if we take it out of football Henry's an actor his, his, uh, that, that industry's <laughs> really like this those other I'm never five the, I'm never the first but, choice by the way yeah those <laughs> other five again the guy that's got the shirt he ain't that good he's not that good he dropped this one on Saturday I don't know why I don't know why the boss is favouring him I don't, does that go on? <laughs> Or is there is it completely um, different rules with goalies? Um, not publicly enough for myself. I'll certainly, um, when I'm not in the team, you know, I'll, I'll still back up the keeper who's playing because we're a squad and we're in it together. But um, I, I think I think that sort of mentality comes back and bites you on the backside sometimes if you if you're always uh, you know backstabbing and things like that. I think the better the other goalkeepers are around you, the more it pushes you on to to train and play well and that's something that I try and try and do you know I'm always um, trying to help the others out and, and they are me and uh, that competition is healthy especially in a, a big group of goalkeepers we're all pushing each other other on so whoever is in the team uh, at that time you know they'll, they'll be doing everything they can to keep the others out and that healthy competition is definitely definitely good in in goalkeeping. Um, yeah, I, I'm just going to take you back to Saturday's game. <clears throat> Another clean sheet, which is great, obviously. 
But we, we've had a discussion already, the Birmingham fans, which we say a little bit lively. I mean, how, how is it uh, when you've got a bunch of fans um, who, yeah, a bit lively behind you? I mean, how, how do you sort of keep your concentration on the game? Because you must have been aware that stuff was going on. Um, I was aware, but not so, not more than any other game, to be honest, on Saturday. I, I mean, I heard a few things and, and seen a few things that went on. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and I think uh, probably more. It probably was more so than normal. But for me, I didn't really notice it. It was just another game. You know, most most games you play in, you, you at home you'll usually have one end of the goal, which you've got the opposition fans behind you, and that that's normal. That's part of it. And when you're away, you've got a full stadium. So um, it's it's not something that I really uh, concentrate on. You, you you try and stay in the game, and you saw it's just it's just all the noise going on around you and. That, that that doesn't really affect me personally. Well, that's um, good. I mean, and the thing is, you're not. <clears throat> I think if you're, you tend to get picked on if you're slightly overweight. So there's a few songs for that. <laughs> there's um, when when Joe Hart comes along to to Loftus Road or anyone else, you can stick your head and shoulders, you know, where the sun don't shine. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, <laughs> yeah. at the moment, anyway, I don't think you've got any skeletons in cupboard. I don't think they're really targeting <laughs> you, which is good. What do you get, Alex? <laughs> you know, some goalies get fat some get short some get you're a reject to this what do you usually get shouted at you um most of the most of the ones i could have got i, I couldn't tell you right now um, <laughs> um I, I, I i would yeah. say I, I wanted to also compliment you Ellis, on um uh for the first time in a long time and i'm not mentioning i try not to mention too many names you've got an absolutely massive clearance <laughs> it has not been in the locker of many QPR goalies. Mark my words. I'm going back as far as Tony Roberts Space here. School, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, great, yeah. Look, t- Tony Roberts is a great uh, goalkeeper and the first goalkeeper to score in the FA Cup for Dagenham and Redbridge, FYI. Yeah. Fact fans. But um, uh, he, won- he didn't have a big clearance. And yeah. uh, plenty of goalkeepers who've played for QPR since haven't. And yours yeah. is an absolute rocket. Is that something you trained for? Specifically, um, or is it yeah. just your God-given right to to basically give a one-touch chance <laughs> to a Rangers <laughs> player down the other end? Yeah. To be honest, I was I was never a very good kicker as a kid, and growing up at the John Smith Stadium at Huddersfield, one of the biggest pitches in the league. If anyone's been there, they'll know. Right, you had to be a good kicker, and you had to kick it far just to reach the halfway line. So something I worked very hard on growing up. So uh, how did you do it? Was it was it kind of like Johnny Wilkinson rugby training style, endlessly uh, trying to hoof it to the other end using uh, no, markers no, or something? Pro- probably more more working on the accuracy, but um, just the repetition and the, the, the gym work I do, obviously, he, 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 part of that goes to Every day is leg day. Strength and kicking. <laughs> well, I, I, actually, a lot of the stuff that we do is, is legs as a goalkeeper. So Of course. Um, but I think... Um, Playing the last few years at Uddersfield Towns probably helped that because you come to a ground like Loftus Road and you just have to clip it and you're already at the halfway line. So good, um, that's the right <laughs> attitude. Long may it continue. Long may it continue. So, so Alex, uh, j- just before I get to my next question, seeing as you mentioned Huddersfield Town, do you prefer blue and white vertical stripes or blue and white horizontal hoops? I'm a hoop now, aren't I? I'm good, a hoop. good, 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 man. <laughs> um, I-, I wanted to ask about your first impressions of the club. You- you've only been here six months and. You know this is a nuts place, right? You know this club is, that you've joined is absolutely crazy and that every day is different and that kind of the usual <laughs> rules of, of how things go at other clubs don't apply. Um, how have you found it? Um, the things you talk about, I've, I've heard more so in stories than actually seen firsthand. You know, when I signed, there was a big thing about stability and that was something that I wanted to be, to be part of. Uh, come from a very stable club in Huddersfield and a a very good chairman there so they're trying to do the right things now and that's the, those are the, those sort of changes are taking place and that's something that i'm seeing the the bringing young, young hungry players that were wanting to improve and um i think the changes that are being made are to stabilize the club off off the pitch and um so i have heard stories but um i think things are changing now and hopefully we can that stability will will start to show on the pitch Alex, I've got a couple of, uh, yeah, s- slightly silly questions, I suppose. I-, I just wanted one thing to clear up. How tall are you? Because Wikipedia's got you down as six foot three. Uh, but I told my to my daughter, I thought you were nearer six one. You are six foot three. Um, 
Maybe he's like if an actor with a stage age. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Goalkeepers, yeah. have they have how, a different thing? How tall are you, Alex? He's five yeah, if you're, a, if you're a scout or a manager, I'm 6'3". <laughs> <laughs> he's been editing his wiki. Okay. <laughs> top man, yeah, top if, man. If you stood next to me, I'm more 6'2". Six 6'2 two, more six two. Six two and a half on right. a good day. Right. <laughs> six two and a half. Okay. We'll, we'll edit this out of the podcast. You're 6'4", yeah. you're yeah, you're but six. we know that you're 5'9". <laughs> And the yeah, other, the other, my page, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing was, um, you know, you've, you, you've, I, I, are you from? I know, obviously, you're from the north, but you, and you've been at Huddersfield. But I, I presume you're from that neck of the woods. Yeah, I'm from Huddersfield. Yeah. Yeah. So, so how, you, how, how have you found it down in London? Any any massive changes to your that you that you've experienced or things you've seen? That, Lack of gravy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The weather, that's the one, the one thing that I, oh, tropical I thought paradise. was a myth. I thought, I thought it was a myth, a myth, but coming from the northwest, it's really not. <laughs> the weather has been a lot better. Um, okay, well, that's good. Just driving away from London in sunshine and, and getting back to Huddersfield in snow so sometimes. So uh, that's, what, that's probably one of the things I've noticed. No, but I'm, I'm really enjoying living down here. It's all a new experience um, for me and my wife and little girl. So everything's new to us. It's exciting. Uh, really enjoying playing for the club and and living in the area. So, um, no, and, we're really enjoying it. Any, anything you miss from uh, any, anything that you know, if your mum was to say send you a little food parcel or something like any anything that you you miss that you can't get down here that you you you, you have in Huddersfield. Ah, uh, just my family. Really, I've, oh. I've gr- grown up living with my family. I'm, I'm used to being 15 minutes away from everyone. So that's probably the only thing. Um, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd, that's all I'd say. Really, family. But yeah, I get, I get plenty of opportunity. Everyone wants to come and see London. Not so much me, they but do. they want yeah, to see yeah. London. So they, everyone's excited to come and see us. So uh, it's not it's not been too bad, really. Good. Uh, and Alex, bef- before we let you go, what can fans expect from you and the team for the rest of the season? Um, I think certainly we'll be giving our all. I think you saw that on Saturday. We we started the first half uh, really well, and the second half. Was a lot, they made it a, little, a lot more difficult for us and we had to be really resilient and um, work hard to keep the clean sheet and maintain the win. So um, that's what we're, we, we're working very hard and it's on the training pitch to um, to get it right on a Saturday. And uh, you'll definitely see that from the players. I, ho- I hope so anyway. Uh, I know certainly I'll be giving my all um, to keep the ball out of the net and hopefully with that, that brings results. Thinking of the playoffs? You never know. I mean, Saturday's result did move us uh, up the table a little bit and you, and you think, oh, maybe it only takes a little run and a little slip of form from teams above us. But, I mean, realistically, we, we've, we, it's the old cliche, take one game at a time. You never know. If you can get on a run, you might find yourself close to them and within touch, touching distance. But uh, we know right now it's quite a way off. So uh, we'll certainly be trying to take Saturday's win into a run of games. So, okay, so Alex, we're going to let you go. I've got one final question for you, which is yep. if if everything's all right with your boots and if everything's all right with the, the ground at Loftus Road, because every sort of five minutes in the upper loft, particularly in the second half, so I keep hearing this noise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which that's, is my, usually... that's my little routine. That's my uh, little r- so is, routine. Is, it, is it a bit of superstition or, or, uh, or just a rhythm that you like to get into? I think it's because I try and put, when I'm kicking, especially goal kicks, I'm putting so much force into it. you damn right. Uh, you can have the tendency <laughs> to slip, so I make sure I don't slip. I don't need to be slipping with the away fans behind me, so um, I think I'll get a bit of a jeer for that. So I make sure I don't slip, stay on my feet and get the best strike in the wall. It's, it's probably more habit than superstition. Good but man. Well, in that case, David's having flashbacks. He's, keep, he's having flashbacks. He says that it haunts him in his nightmares, the rattling sound. <laughs> no, yeah, keep, keep it doing it. Keep often, it. Doesn't it? Listen, keep doing it and keep haunting David because exactly. it's working wonders. If mate. it's working for those kicks, I tell you what. Yeah, you know, exactly. keep doing it. No, your form's been excellent, so keep it. Please keep it. Yeah. Um, I'll do everything I can. Alex, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, anytime, for joining anytime. us. Thanks for your time tonight. Really appreciate that. Yeah, and uh, good luck for the rest of the season. All right, thank you. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks, Thanks mate. Come on, you all. Take care. Bye. Bye. Okay. Good interview. My, my first question good was good in my head, and then I, I said it, and then it, it sounded like I was really stoned. <laughs> It, uh, which I, normally I am, but for we, once I'm not. So I'm just like we've what? had a lot worse. Yeah. Don't worry, don't worry. I still think it was a good question though, because actually it was a big night for goalkeepers. It yeah, was a yesterday. Big night for, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. I think that has broke the record for the, the longest question ever asked on the podcast. But no, hey. I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. Yeah. 
Anyway. But I kept on referring to him as Willie, which I think was maybe possibly confusing. So, so through work, I, I do a bit of football sometimes, and I had to go up to Man City's training ground earlier in the season, and Richard Wright is still there. He's still their third goalie. The guy's played something like eight games yeah, in that, that eight the years. Same, the same yeah. Richard Wright, he's played for Ipswich. Ipswich, and, Arsenal, yeah. he's 13 yeah. goalie. He basically put, puts he's the four, cones out. He's 40 stone. <laughs> he puts reckon, the he's on a sofa. How much do you reckon he gets for that? A lot. Because I think at the time he actually turned down like a League One gig <laughs> where he'd play every week That's probably to be the third best choice at Man life. City. Yeah. I mean, everyone says, the thing is, everyone, everyone says, um, I know this is nothing to do with QPR, I says, oh, Christ, well, you know, of course I'd rather play and, you know, why would, you, why, for would goalie, you, though. why would you want to sit on your what backside? You there's and, 92 jobs. Yeah, I know. That's but, all there is. Yeah. There's 92 jobs in the Football League for a goalie. But I can, you know... So you, you're bound to not, you know, the, you, you, there are reserve professional reserve goalies which aren't necessarily for defenders and attackers. But, Sorry, yeah, and also, like, there's actors who are only understudies. But if you're, yeah, getting, yeah. If you're, if you're getting into your dough, I mean, uh, in, in football terms, and so and you could go and play for League One for threepence eighty, or you can c- keep collecting your, your your few grand at Man City. Then why not, really? I mean, oh, I, I see what you mean. I, yeah. I mean, I know if it was at QPR, I'd be saying completely. The but opposite, are you but... more interested in kind of in the mind's eye of a sportsman whether actually it's a kind of it's crippling not to play? Or actually, if you're getting paid and you're kind of doing what you what yeah. you what you want to do, it's actually all right. Yeah, I mean, I'm, yeah, all of that basically, all of the above. <laughs> but I mean, I, I think I can. I, I, what I'm saying is, it's easy to say, you know, if you're in your mid thirties, you, you you just want to be out there playing every week. Maybe you don't. Maybe yeah. you're happy. Maybe you're happy getting, you know, ten, twenty, thirty grand a week. For doing nothing, especially if you're married That's and then bad, a couple of kids yeah. come along and all that. Really, but like I say, if that was if he was at QPR, then I'd be first saying that's outrageous. He should be. Yeah, but uh, yeah. your man Alex said there were six people, six so, goalies. So who are they? <laughs> all these guys. So there's well, then, Green, Ingram, Smithies, Lumley. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and who are the other? Joanna's two? boy. Yeah, two uh, other, I don't know who the other two are. Two other maybe, two. maybe they're two coach. Two, two no, he said six pros, didn't he? Anyway, I said six people co. No, so you said six people training. Well, no. When I said there's five of you not playing and one is, you didn't correct me, did he? So I took that to mean six goalies. You know what? It's better. Anyway, don't even touch on the way. Well, that shows if every club in the football league has six goalies, which they probably don't. Then that's what five hundred goalies for ninety-two spots. It's hard being a goalie. It's not like if you're yeah. a centre back and you can. I know sort of what play I wanted to. What defense. I wanted to ask Alex, but I basically did, was a bit too a pussyfooted about the lingo. Was you were the second? You were the second guy. I can't believe you pussyfooted around anything. <laughs> you were the honest, second but, yeah. guy, and now you're the first guy. Yeah. Last night, one of the most. Uh, prominent second guys became yeah. the first guy. Yeah. yeah. Did that give oh, you a buzz? Why okay. did you say that? We haven't got a time machine. I though, know, so I know, but I didn't want I, I felt mind. bad about labelling him the oh, second guy. So one thing I remembered yeah, yeah. when you were talking in the Just 18 months since you've been on. Clever. No, don't edit it. Please. To make him not. One thing so I remembered stunned. is you're a massive Tony Roberts fanboy. Yeah, huge. I have Tony Roberts' gloves framed next to my bed where I sleep with my wife. True story. Is that true? Wow. On, on the wall. <laughs> oh my God. And it says, to Henry, be lucky, on the gloves. And I... How old were you when you got those? 28. <laughs> <laughs> Last week. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. Uh, uh, I was maybe nine. Yeah. I, okay, uh, before, I, wrote, I wrote a letter to him. I've told you this story on the podcast. This is boring maybe for people who've heard before. I wrote a letter to him as part of a school project yes, and he I wrote remember, back. Yeah. And he wrote back. And but, I uh, have these gloves. And what are, you, what are you up to at the moment? Well, I am soon to be returning to your screens in Indian Summer Series 2, which is on Sunday, March 13th at 9pm on Channel 4. So, you, by the way... There you go, bing bong. We're, and you're the lead in that, aren't you? I'm the guy. I'm the, I'm the you're name? not the number two guy. You're, you're the number, number one two, guy. You're well, the number no, no, one. You're so, the Alex several, Smithies. Several other people got, you know, turned the job down. And are, then, you uh, the, are, are you the Rob Green, Alex Smithies, Matt Ingram or Joe Lumley? Of that show? Of that show. I'm the Tony Roberts. <laughs> ah. Do you know what? You're haunting me at the moment. I see you every single night because um, at home we're watching something on More 4, like on Catch Up, and we yeah. download it. Right. And they only show two adverts 
on more four stuff at the moment. Friday face. night dinner and the other one's Indian summer. <laughs> so in it, every mate. ad break, you're click in. Click on it. Download this. Just watch it. Just cl- endlessly click on it, and then you know what? Fifteen p in the post. Well, I tell you what. We'll, to we'll, this guy. If you can, if you can so get, you get, yeah, fifteen p for what? I'm saying if you watched it like endlessly online, you get fifteen p for a certain number of. Watches. I get royalties. All right. So do you reckon... Not, not too shabby. I'm the... Um, what's the guy? What's the Man City guy? <laughs> Willy Caballero. No, the guy who's just on the books. <laughs> oh, Richard Wright. Richard Wright. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Richard Wright. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So... Um, You're in Indian <laughs> Summers. That's out soon. March 13th. Okay. Sun- Sunday, March 13th, 9pm. Channel 4. Uh, Channel 4. Watch it. Tell your mum. Tell your auntie. Yeah. Press record. Uh, and, and just for anybody that either hasn't seen it or is a... Is yeah, sh- yeah yeah what is yeah. it about? It is the history of uh, well the end of the British Empire in India. You know the decline and fall of what um, to pardon the phrase was the jewel in the crown of, mm. of uh, everything that the empire represented, and it's crumbling. And it was crumbling in the first series, and now it's series two. Uh, the shit is really starting to hit the fan. So um, expect kind of um, fireworks and um, lots of acting and emotion from yours truly. And, and your, the name of your character is? Ralph Whelan. Ralph Whelan. And going back to David's question some moments earlier uh, about the Oscars, uh, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going li- to li- list you. I mean, okay, we, you could say, who's your, best actor, you could say, who's your favourite QPR player of the season so far? Uh, well, I, I, I like Luongo, actually. Yeah. I think he's. I feel like there's he's some finding his feet. Isn't but he? no, but I, I feel I just have this whiff of genuine creativity, mm-hmm. and that's, with all due respect, at this level in, the, in our current incarnation, not ever present. And I appreciate it when I see it. And best team performance in a leading role. I mean, was Saturday best up team there, performance in a leading role was uh, was it? What was the one where we were two one d- two nil down and we came back two two? Was that Brighton? That was uh, wolf, well, wolf, wolves. 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 We won wolves. three wolves. two, didn't we? Yeah. Wolves. Sorry, wolves. Yeah. Wolves. Okay. That's and, that's and the final and best soundtrack. on the Oscars. <laughs> Any chance you think in future time we'll be saying, of course, yeah, we had the former Oscar nominee stroke winner Henry Lloyd Hughes on our podcast a few years ago. Uh, I mean, listen, never say never. Do you watch the Oscars and think, I'm better than him, I'm better than him, she was rubbish? Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, 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 I, it's a bit too late for me. It was 1.30 in the morning, I'm not watching yeah. it. Oh. Yeah, but I'm I saying, meant too late in life. No, it's too, yeah, it's too late, I'm, yeah. I'm retired. No, yeah. it's too late, uh, uh, but I mean, I'm thinking it. I'm thinking it, but just in my dreams. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, sure, sure. I mean, it's going to happen, guys. Don't worry. And, you know, there's <laughs> good, nothing good. to stop me when I win it wearing a QPR you pin bag. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, that can happen. So, uh, I And mean, I'd like to thank Open All Arms. Exactly, who, uh, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we're hear. all thinking it. I mean, yeah. the, the hopes of, uh, of a nation are, are, are on my shoulders. Very much so. Not Indeed. a chance. Get me a film. Some other people need to turn down films and then I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. We're nearly at the end. Uh, Ours end, anything we sort of haven't mentioned for, uh, should talk about. I All I wanted to talk about was did anyone read Clive interview with Tony Fernandez. Yeah. This is Clive who is uh, Clive Whittingham from yeah, I've, I've Words. I wanted to be on the podcast on. with him. He's a real you know, member of the QPR Illuminati that has some, some Absolutely, so yeah. far elu- eluded me. It, it, did you we can, we can fix with, it up. Why don't, why don't you come up uh, <laughs> uh, 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 in the in the pub that they go to before the game? Well, the Crown Centre. Oh yeah, that's it. Oh, you they want to mention it. <laughs> v- very very good interview with Tony oh, right. Fernandez. I wanted to read it. Sorry, can you tell it's me what still is up there? What is the sum of the gold that is in within it? Well, Clive got an audience with Tony Fernandez where he. Uh, <sighs> I detected perhaps a little bit of frustration on Clive's part in the interview, but basically Tony, you know, kind of Q&A with him. I suppose if you're cynical, you can look at it and say the gist of it was any mistakes we made were the manager's fault, anything we did well was our, was down to us. Uh, my reading of it is the guy means well. He's that, never that's not meant well. I think he is prone to terrible, terrible rushes of blood to the head. That's kind of what I got from it. And and that is in, exemplified in his tweets and Instagram posts. And he gets... Shooting you know, from the hip you know for better or for worse. You know how people say, always trust your gut? Yeah. 
do you know what Tony Fernandez? don't, don't trust, trust your gut <laughs> yeah. well, I, I, that's I, what you have to call this podcast what, by the way don't trust don't your gut don't trust your gut yeah. because that's what happens so they started the, we know for well they started the season saying consolidation um, subtext will be happy with mid table finish then like they just decide kind of in a moment oh we're going for promotion Chris Ramsey doesn't deliver that I think, fire I th- him I think he thinks like a fan that's the thing he thinks like a like a um, somebody on a website and and somebody like I did for a bit. You know, you hear Charlie Austin staying, you hear Furs staying, you hear Phillips, you hear all the big names, and you think actually suddenly uh, from consolidation we might we be able do to do this. this. But but it's one thing saying it as a fan and tweeting it or putting it on your Facebook page. But the owner of the whole shebang doing it, and then Matt Phillips, you've got treating you know when Charlie Austin. St- stays hashtag promotion it's just like oh god we you know we that's the problem and i i think it's over enthusiasm and with paul clement when you said i've met my yeah. d- uh, ideal manager yeah was clement, it's right? only, and it like was i said clement, last yeah. week i mean the qpr media team must you know when they hear the ding in the inbox and it's a tony fernandez tweet they must think oh here we go yeah. again yeah but I, I do think i've always said this i think i think he means well i i, I think maybe he does think like a fan there's nothing he's wrong like with that. an authentic guy but, like, but think, just most way. of the chairman don't actually tweet well, it well there was quite everybody. a bit of the interview where clive was kind of making it clear i don't think it's such a good idea that you're on twitter and instagram and yeah, you yeah. tweet things it, when you're emotional and tony fernandez sort of said well i know you disagree with that but that's what i'm going to do my anyway. style. Yeah. listen to clive KP, tony listen to clive K- as kp says that's the way i play exactly yeah. right well, henry I, I, on to you then well my arse end is also tony fernandez related which is that i uh i don't i'm running out of reasons to see why i'm not the face of uh Pucker pies uh, well of the face of <laughs> Of Air Asia, I'm uh, okay. <laughs> right, <laughs> okay. You know you cannot get an Air Asia flight from not just the no, no, UK, no, no. Bear but with Europe. Me, bear with oh, me. Okay. okay. Last two, yeah. years, last two years since I've not since yeah. I've not been on the podcast. Right. Yeah. I've yeah. been filming in the Air Asia, the main uh, hub. Yeah. Right? Okay, which is an island uh, called Penang, which is off oh, the yeah. west coast of Malaysia. Yeah. That's where we film the show Indian Summer. Okay. So bear with me, right? Keep 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 up. I am a QPR fan living and working in malaysia for the major- more of the year than not the year yeah flying his airline do you fly a lot of air asia yeah of course it's like the easy jet of asia i mean that's like a harsh way of saying it. you know what i mean yeah right and uh you know i'm the living in uh, surely i should be uh, what's your point I, I should be su- I should be supping at the top table with Tony, and I just need him to just you know let's just have a beer, let's have a chat. I'm your man. You think you deserve some kind of extra treatment on Air Asia because you're a QPR no, fan and you travel. Air I'd Asia. like to talk about the future of um, uh, all things Malaysia with Tony because I, I I'm part of the Malaysian film industry. And I'm a QPR fan. Tony Fernandez, if that? you're listening, which you're not, if you're listening, get in touch with Henry Lloyd Hughes. When, when are you next in Malaysia? Uh, when uh, series, uh, b- well, potential series Have they brought you on for three. series three or are we going to have an in-between? Oh, so you don't die oh, in series oh, two then. Hang on. Are uh, they using, are they, have they signed you up for series three or have we got an in-between us two situation here? I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen, we've always, cruel. we've always got an in-between us, <laughs> we've always got an in-between us two situation. Uh, no, <laughs> for I, those who don't know, Henry gave a fantastic performance in the series and in-between us one. Um, and then you own, you clearly only went to go see the yeah, second movie because you yeah, thought yeah. I was going to be in it. Yeah. And bam, sucker punch. Uh, yeah, listen, a lot of, a lot of people. Uh, you'll feel be in that it. Way. You're the lead. I, mean, I, I think I'll be in yeah, the, the, so. the, the, the third series. So, so if that okay. happens, then Tony, I'm in your backyard. Um, you know, I'm, call me. Call me. Call me, Tony. Let's, let's, listen, if he's stuck in KL, that's an hour away. Let's have brunch. Let's talk about Carl Henry. Whatever. I'm flexible. Don't start me on brunch. It's either <laughs> breakfast or. Yeah. I won't do a whole Larry David thing. Yeah. Chris. Well, I can't really follow <laughs> that, can I? I mean, how could I possibly follow that? What, um, a, a desperate personal plea to, to yeah. be mates with Tony Fernandez? <laughs> I to mean, get mine, an upgrade on Air Asia. Yeah. Mine's going to be so boring. I, I mean, it, it, it's a reiteration of last week. Um, you know, don't get too excited. We won a game. We, 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 we're playing well. We're, not gonna, we, we're still not going to get to the players. I hope we don't. I yeah, think it'd be I, terrible I if we did. A bit of consolidation. Keep the faith, Jimmy Floyd, Asselman, blah, blah, blah. And I'd also, in his absence, like to thank Paul Finney for everything he's done for the podcast. Very good. The QPR podcast is sponsored by XL Environmental, a pest control company based in Northolt and the Southeast. They provide for all your pest control needs, along with bird control, hazardous waste removal and ground maintenance. And they're Rangers fans. So if you call them on 0845 
double one treble six double one. Mention our podcast for a ten percent discount. UPR, UPR, Chris Rangers are on the up and up. UPR, UPR.